Welcome to Ugandan Art Speaks Out, the podcast that celebrates the diversity and creativity of Ugandan arts and culture. Produced by Omochi Creative, a non-government organization that uses art to create social change and promote empowerment in Uganda. This podcast takes you on a weekly journey of discovery through the vibrant and diverse world of Ugandan art. Each episode features insightful conversations with talented artists and creatives who share their stories, inspirations, and passions. Whether you are an art lover, a curious listener, or someone looking to expand your understanding of Ugandan art and culture, Ugandan Art Speaks Out invites you now to join us on an unforgettable journey through Uganda's creative diversity. And now, let's start the show. In the realm of storytelling and the arts, there are those who transcend boundaries and inspire generations. Today, we have the privilege of hearing from one such luminary. I would rather actually introduce myself as a storyteller because I do not only write for stage, I write for other um, forms of media. Introducing Deborah Asimwe Kawe, a visionary playwright and a custodian of culture. Her pen weaves narratives that capture the essence of our humanity. Stories that resonate with the soul of Uganda and echo throughout the globe. I am also a performer for the longest time and actually that was my entry point into theatre. I entered theatre as an actor and uh, along the way with so many other responsibilities coming my way, I have found myself putting, I think, my actor hat at the back. Uh, but it is something that I'm really passionate about. She challenges us to look deeper, to understand the world through the eyes of the characters she so vividly brings to life. Uh, I'm also a producer, and the producing heart is the one that has been taking, I guess together with my playwriting heart, I've been taking the four for back for ground um, and so I've been producing for quite some time uh, something that I thought I would never do uh, because I guess many of us creatives we think that to be able to be a creator we need to be putting out work or be in front of the audience or be in front of the camera um, and so I never thought that I would ever ever uh, describe myself as a producer, but that is also the other hat that I wear. Her work is not just a performance, it's an experience, a journey into the heart of what it means to be human. Join us as we delve into the mind of Deborah Asimwekawe and discover the power of theatre to change hearts, minds, and societies. Most recently, I've gotten very interested in stagecraft. Uh, this is the area of stage construction, the area of design, uh, lighting design, sound, costume. Uh, I, I've entered that space because of the work that uh, my colleagues and I do at the Kampala International Theatre Festival. Um, so those are the several hats that I wear. I could go on to talk about many others that I guess people don't see. Uh, one of them being a mentor. 
I'm very passionate about mentoring young people who are interested in the creative industry, who are interested in uh, in stage administration, I mean, pardon me, in arts administration and management, uh, who are interested in writing for stage or for live audiences. So that is also another area that, that I'm very interested in, uh, largely because I think at the time that I was growing up, I didn't come across many people who were um, referring to themselves as mentors to the younger generation. So yeah, those are the so many and the so few things that I do as a creative person. Welcome to the heart of creativity and culture exchange, where the vibrant spirit of Uganda's theatre comes Everybody alive. Everybody knows what the man looks like, except me. Ah, all along it was you blood in the car. This is the story of Tebere Arts Foundation, a beacon of inspiration nestled in the bustling streets of Kampala. So Tebere is a word in Runyankore Lutiga, and it is a refrain uh, for when someone is telling a story. So when the storyteller among the Banyankore Bachiga takes the center stage, they start the story by saying, Mbaganere Mbaganere. Now that word, honestly, I don't think there's a translation to it. <laughs> and so the, the audience or the listener says, Tebere. And for us, the way we translate it is keep telling your story or go on with your story. So it's just a refrain. Every time the storyteller pauses, then the audience says, Tebere. I am one of the directors of Tebere Arts Foundation, uh, actually co-founder of Tebere Arts Foundation alongside Oyenbot and uh, Kenneth Chimuli, also known as Pablo. We co-founded this arts organization in 2018, um, but we registered, we, yes, we registered it towards the end of 2018. Since its inception in 2018, the Tiberi Arts Foundation has been at the forefront of revolutionizing Uganda's theatre scene. We started this organization um, to respond to what we felt was a need. Recognizing the critical need for practical experience, it has committed to transforming academic learning into dynamic, stage-ready skills for Ugandan artists. The time that uh, I went to Makere University uh, as a student, I first studied a diploma in music, dance and drama, and then went back after a few years to uh, study a bachelor's in, in the arts with a drama component as my major. Um, when I was doing my diploma, I felt that the course was very uh, practical. And that was very important for us who were now preparing ourselves to, to go out into the field and to practice art. So we had opportunities to to actually do what we had studied in class. So we would study acting, but we would also get an opportunity to, to perform. We would study directing and we would get an opportunity to direct scripts. Um, we would go into communities and perform in communities. We would have an opportunity to organize, which basically is 
what a producer does to organize where we were going to start to perform from. The academic shift at Makere University has echoed through the corridors of Uganda's theater industry, casting a shadow on the vibrancy of practical artistry. Um, but then when I was doing my bachelor's degree, that the course had been restructured and it had become more academic than practical. Um, and so there was a situation where we felt, the three of us, we felt that students were graduating from Makere University in performing arts, but actually did not have space to practice what they had studied, but also to sharpen their skills. This pivot towards theoretical learning has inadvertently led to a generation of theater academics, leaving a parable void where once stood the spirited performances of seasoned stage practitioners. Um, and so we started Tiberi Arts Foundation to kind of be a conservator space where artists could, those who have graduated from Makere University, but also self-taught artists who are looking to hone their skill, uh, to discover their, what we call their individual artistic voice or practice, because it's one thing to study so many things, but, but if there isn't a space where the artists or students can go to test that which interests them, uh, to question what practice tags at their heart, then they will go out in the world having, you know, their feet in several places, but without actually knowing what it is that, that, that is of major interest to them. Uh, so we started Tiberi Arts Foundation to create that kind of space. Here, emerging talents are nurtured and seasoned playwrights find new horizons. Let's talk about suspension of disbelief because that's the actual technique that deals with it. Okay, all right then. That the, the audience, they will take anything so long as you're convincing. That's it. So the cattle may or may not be there, but the, the audience's mind, I, and I always tell for people before a play begins, people who, when I work with them with the play, I say, please don't shake, don't panic. These people have come here in goodwill. They, they come generously. Oh, half the time, they come generously. You have to let them down so badly for them to turn against you, often. Now, but we know we are artists. Our goal is not to let down that audience. From the intensive labs, that forged the next generation of artists to the international festival that showcases the world's finest performances. All right, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. You're very welcome uh, to the second day of uh, the Kampala International Theater Festival 2023, which is also our 10th edition. One of the things I always tell participants, guests, the Rare Arts Foundation is not just an organization, it's a movement. A movement that has set a precedent for mentorship in Uganda. A movement that continues to write new chapters in the history of Ugandan theater. Every year we take in 12, 10 to 12, uh, what we call emerging artists. And these are artists that we define as people at the threshold of their career. So we take them in for a whole year. And what we do is to expose them to different ways of performance, both in front of the audience and also backstage, uh, to give them skills and also to encourage them to question what it is that really is of interest to them and where possible, 
we support that interest further beyond the one year lab uh, that we give them. Um, so our vision and mission is to create a space where uh, arts can thrive in this country, but also across the region. At the core of Tiberi Arts Foundation lies a singular, unwavering mission to cultivate a sanctuary where artists do not just exist, but flourish. It's a realm where creativity knows no bounds, where every performer, playwright, and director can unleash their full potential and elevate the art of theatre to new heights. And we are excited, extremely excited, because for the first time in uh, the history of Tevere Arts Foundation and KITF, we are partnering with MasterCard for the very first time. And guess what? The icing on the cake is that they are launching their report in this festival. To us, that's more than a blessing. Let's clap for MasterCard Foundation. And there's no better way to do it by having a panel that will discuss uh, this amazing topic of skills for a digital age for Uganda's young creatives. Uh, that's what the report is about. And uh, we have Grace Nantavalo. Thank you so much for being here. To us, uh, I've always been, I've been reading her articles, following her on Twitter. I never put the face to the hashtag. And so you should have seen me asking her, so, huh? And she told me, I'm well, like, ah, uh, We you. also <laughs> believe yeah, that yeah, it's important for an artist to be in a space that feels safe, where they know that it's okay to fail. If so, for example, they are writing a play and they don't feel like, okay, this is the play that I want to write, that they can, you know, change and start all over again. I think we, we are, our school systems emphasize, um, emphasize passing, you know, if we sit an exam, one has to pass, but in art, there isn't such a thing as, as, as failing. As artists, we should always be in constant, uh, uh, constant space of trying out things. Uh, and so that is the kind of space that we, we are creating as Tevere Arts Foundation. Join us in the upcoming episodes as we embark on a journey with Tevere Arts Foundation. Be part of this adventure and witness the transformation of lives through the power of art. Together, we will explore the diverse programs offered by Tevere, uncovering the stories behind the scenes and celebrating the spirit of Ugandan creativity. <laughs> <laughs>